Welcome to my channel. This is my fifth and final reaction for the day. Before we get into that, I want to thank you for coming here and for supporting me and for the wonderful comments and for the amazing growth of my channel. Thank you. This request is very interesting. It's apparently not a song. Um, it's called The Parable of the Blob. No idea what that is. <laughs> um, the note that I got from the requester is, I found this allegory to be very revealing of the time we live in. So, um, <laughs> the times we live in are interesting, that's for sure. Uh, the presenter, I guess, I don't know if he's a pastor or what he is, his name is Steve Gregg. So, we're going to get into this uh, in just a minute, and I will put links to uh, this site in the description of my video as I always do and of course links to the video itself because I always want you to know everything about what I'm doing so let's get into this the parable of the blob <laughs> I'll close with a, 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 an analogy, a parable from a 1950s B-horror movie, The Blob. Anyone remember the movie The Blob? I mean the original one, The Blob, from 1958. Steve, Steve McQueen's first starring role, 27-year-old Steve McQueen starring as a teenager in high school. And, uh, and it was, you may not know this, it was, it was the, the most successful horror movie of the 50s. It was made by a Christian company. They didn't, uh, you know, it wasn't their idea. A secular guy had the idea for the movie, approached a Christian company, said, you can make a lot of money and you can preach your gospel with the money if you make this movie and sell it to Hollywood. So a Christian pastor wrote the script. Uh, another Christian pastor of another denomination you know, uh, directed it. It's, it was a Christian company that had made 200 Christian f smaller films and it's the only secular film they made, The Blob. But it's not even secular. The idea came from a, a, an unbeliever who probably didn't know the genius behind it. Let me tell you about the, the, the basic plot. It terrified me when I was a kid. Saw it again when I was an adult. Not so afraid this time, but when I was a kid, at five years old. It was... This stone from outer space comes and strikes the earth in a farmer's field. The farmer comes out at night, the dog's barking. He sees this stone, it's smoking or steaming or something. And he, he hits it with a stick, it cracks open. It's about the size of a soccer ball, maybe. And there's this blob in it, this, which is the namesake of the movie. And it's a kind of a, it's red, it's gelatinous, it's kind of throbbing. And he's curious, of course. And as always happens in, in uh, horror movies, uh, people behave as people never really would. He, he takes the blob out on his stick. He raises it up to look at it. Now that was a big mistake. Uh, the, the thing came down the stick on his arm, began to eat his hand, his arm, screaming. He's, he somehow makes it to the doctor. Uh, it's already eaten him up. Uh, it's bigger because it ate him. And uh, it eats the nurse, it eats the doctor. And it's, uh, now it's got a taste for human flesh, I guess. So it begins moving through this town and eating everyone it can reach. Now it moves about this, uh, the speed of a snail, but it, it captures everyone. <laughs> because when they see it, they never run. They just stand and scream until it catches up with them. And so it eats almost the whole town. It gets almost as big as a town. <laughs> At the end of the movie, all the stars Steve McQueen and, and the group of teenagers that are the heroes of the movie, I won't go into that. They're in a 
basement of a diner, and the blob is big enough to cover the whole diner. I don't want to spoil it for you, but the blob doesn't eat the heroes, and it doesn't eat the diner, but, and it doesn't eat the world. But the impression is given that if, some, if they don't figure some way to stop it, it'll eat up everyone on the planet, because every time it eats someone, it gets bigger. When I got older and read about this stone that Daniel talked about, that grows to fill the whole earth and consumes all the nations, I thought, it's like, that's like the blob, only good. It's like a good blob, because it grows by absorbing more people. When you became a follower of Christ, the kingdom of darkness lost someone and the kingdom of God gained someone. This is why the, Satan is so opposed. This is why Satan is so threatened. This is why the demons believe and tremble. Because the kingdom of God cannot be stopped. It can be persecuted. It can in some cases be slowed down, but it's not stopped. Over 2,000 years, it's, it's absorbed a quarter of the world. And its designs are on the whole thing. And the devil doesn't want that, and so he fights us. That's what spiritual warfare is about. I always thought spiritual warfare about learning to overcome temptation and, and be a better Christian and not let the devil make me, you know, get demon-possessed or something. And, of course, that's important. But I now understand spiritual warfare is not all about me. The, the whole concept of spiritual warfare is not about me winning my personal battle against the devil. It's about two kingdoms in conflict. That of David, that of Saul, that of Satan, that of Christ. And we have been translated out of the power of darkness into the kingdom, so the kingdom got bigger when you came in. And, and it's, it's got designs on the whole world. And this is, this is not an instructional sermon. This is more to kind of open our eyes to understand what the Bible is saying. The people of God are the subjects of Jesus Christ because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's at the right hand of God. All authority in heaven and earth belong to him. Our commission is to go and disciple the nations by what? Not, not just converting and baptizing, but discipling them, teaching them to observe everything he, the king, commanded. Bring these people, bring the nations to obedience. Paul said that he was ordained as an apostle to, for the obedience of the nations to the faith. The faith is the message of the kingdom of God. And bringing the nations into obedience to Christ is the mission. Now, sure, we have to improve our spiritual lives, too. And we're going to go to heaven when we die. And someday there will be a day when the whole world acknowledges Jesus is Lord. Every knee is going to bow. In the meantime, we're not just sitting around on the bus bench waiting for the rapture. We're part of a warfare that's global and quite far advanced compared to where it started. This mustard seed has grown into quite a large tree. This stone has grown into a mountain to fill it doesn't completely fill, but it has reached the whole world, and it's going to consume all the kingdoms. It says in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15, that when the final trumpet sounds, announcement made, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever. I never saw the blob, uh, but that sounds like a pretty uh, dumb movie. It really does. Um, that was an interesting, uh, interesting analogy. I have to give that some thought. Uh, I never really thought about it that way. But he's right that at the end of the world, when it's all said and done, every knee will bow. So uh, why not bow now? <laughs> Would be my message. <sighs> well, that was interesting. I, I don't know what that had to do with music, but it was interesting to watch. I've never seen this guy before. don't know anything about him. Uh, but he had an interesting message. So, once again, I want to thank you for coming to my channel, and I want to pray for you. I pray that God will enter into your life 
and bring you peace. And that he will do that for every single person that you love. So until tomorrow, this is the Vietnam era vet signing off.